okay so we will start our session so in our last class we had uh, completed python set today so we will cover the remaining two collection that is uh, what tuple and dictionary so now i will uh, create a new python file so i will give the file name suppose python tuple i will click on rename option so tuple python tuple okay so what is tuple so it is another collection in python so the concept of list the concept of tuple it is completely same that is duplicates are allowed and insertion order is preserved so everything whatever the list feature same feature that we will get in tuple but only one difference that difference is what that is list is mutable what do you mean a mutable that means uh, changeable behavior changeable behavior whereas what tuple is immutable immutable that means non changeable non changeable behavior non changeable behavior so mutable changeable behavior means so if we want to do some changes that it is possible that we can do in list suppose we have a list and after performing removal operation so list data items or list size is changing we can do various operations we can perform various operations over list but whereas tuple it is not possible that we can do operations so if i want to change something in case of tuple then it is not possible i will show you so whatever the tuple uh, built in functions that we will see so that type of built in functions not available for performing any operation so again i am repeating tuple is a such collection so here the feature is the concept is same as list duplicates are allowed and insertion order is preserved so we already we had completed list list meant for square bracket that means data items are coming within a square bracket we saw in set data items are coming within curly bracket so here in tuple data items that we will assign within a parenthesis so here let uh, my tuple uh, name is support p1 equals to within parenthesis that we will assign so let i will assign let 100 200 let my data item is 12.45 then multiple types of data items suppose if i want to assign then uh, there is a boolean value suppose i will take and there is a string value i will take and there is a duplicate data item that i will take okay let 300 let print e1 okay so tuple means parenthesis so within parenthesis we will assign the data item now you see now i will hit run okay so you see so duplicates are allowed so 100 and again i have inserted 100 so this is my duplicate data item so duplicates are allowed and insertion order is preserved so first i have inserted 100 i got 100 then i had inserted 200 i got 200 then i have inserted 12.45 then i got 124.12.45 12 so from this observation so what uh, we are getting the point so duplicates are allowed and insertion order is preserved so in which way that we had completed all the concepts all the features of list so in same way that we will do that same so internally a memory is allocating name of the memory is t1 this t1 containing this data items so then if i want to uh, get the length length of tuple to get the length of tuple 
length of topple T1, length of topple T1. So, very simple, there is a built in function LEN function, len function that we have to call. So, number of data items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Number of data items present in tuple that is called as length of tuple. So, if I will write T1, now I will hit run, so I will get 7. So, maximum points are common that uh, whatever we had covered in list and set. If I want uh, to know what is the size of, to get uh, size of topple, that means how, may, how much amount of memory is allocating, same way import sys, then within print function, output statement, I will write sys dot get size of, so within bracket, I will specify the topple t1. Okay, so this point that already we have known, so get size of is a built in function and uh, which is coming from sys module. So that's why I uh, wrote sys dot get size of function. So uh, that's why, so get size, what I am getting, so what is the or how much amount of memory is reserving for T1, you see, now I will hit off. So, I got 96. So, that means 96 bytes of memory is allocating and the name of the memory is T1. Then, uh, same way, so here uh, like list, so index is generating, this is 0th index data item, this is 1 index data item and this is 2 index, this is 3 index, this is 4 index, this is 5 index and this is 6th index. Similarly, if I will what specify the index value in backward way, so that part already I have completed. So, this is minus 1 index, this is minus 2 index data items, this is minus 3 index data item, this is minus 4 index data item, this is minus 5 index data item and this is minus 6 index data item and this is minus 7 index data item. So, if I want to, if I want to what access individual individual data items so to the index value that i will access t1 of 0 i will hit run so i got 100 t1 of minus 1 i will hit run so i got 300 so by index value so it is possible that we can access individual data items then uh, we will go to the next point. I want to retrieve all data items. I want to retrieve all data items from tuple T1. So already uh, this part also we have known in list in which way that uh, we had retrieved from list in same way that uh, we can retrieve all the data items from tuple T1. So using for loop. So for x in t1, I will print x. So the meaning is for each value of t1 in x, I will print x. Print x is the loop body that already I have explained in a list and a set. So all data items one by one, suppose if I will see, you see first if I will, so I will bring t1 data items, you see first the data item 100 will come to x. So, when a data item is assigning into loop variable, then loop body will execute. This is the for loop mechanism. Then after executing the body, the control will go to the next data item. So, the next data item 200 will come to x. Again, body will execute print x. The value of x will print that is 200 will print. So, after executing the body, again the control will go to the next data item that is 12.45. So, this 12.45 will come to x, again body will execute, 12.45 will print. After executing the body, the control will go to the next data item that is true. So, that will come to x. So, again body will execute, true will print. After that, the control will go to the next data item, python, that python will come to x. Again, body will execute, Python will print. After that, the control will go to 100. Again, 100 will come to X. Again, body will execute, 100 will print. 
After that, the control will go to the next data item 300. 300 will come to X again. The body will execute. So 300 will print. So after executing the body, the control will go to the next data item, but there is no next data item. So when the control is finding there is no data item, then loop will terminate. So when loop is terminating, so at that time, so we will get all data items. And here X is called as loop variable. It is completely user defined. Instead of X, then you can uh, take any variable, Ramadama, YZ, whatever you can take any type of any, 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 any variable that you can take. So now you see, I will hit run. So I got all data items. So in this way, so this is the way that we can retrieve all data items from Tuffle. So any from any collection, if I want to retrieve all data items so that we can retrieve using for loop. So this concept again that we will cover in our upcoming chapter that is flow control. So I hope you, uh, everybody, you got clarity. Okay, so this is the first basic things. So how to represent a TOEFL, length of a TOEFL and what is the size of TOEFL, how to access individual data item and how to retrieve all data items from TOEFL. Then uh, we will see there are uh, various approaches that uh, we can represent a TOEFL. So tuple type of T1. So if I want to see, I will hit run. So I got tuple. So T1 is a tuple. No doubt that hence we proved. Okay. So we will see another approach. Another approach uh, to represent okay, a tuple. Okay. So uh, Okay, not an issue. So one directly within parenthesis, okay, let it that I will take T2. Suppose let my tuple name is T2. Suppose one data item, one string value that I will take that is A. So the single quote I have identified, so it is a string value. So the control will consider it is a string value. In Python, string value identified within a single quote or a double quote or a triple quote. Similarly, T3, suppose I will write A comma double A. Similarly, I, uh, I will write T4, so A comma double A comma triple A. So what I am trying, I am trying to represent T2, T3, T4 as a TOEFL. So friend, T2, then a friend, T3, then print T4. So I am trying to represent T2, T3, T4 as a tuple, but now I will hit run, you see. So now I executed it. So when I executed, this is my output screen. Okay. So, but uh, from this output screen, what we are observing? What, what uh, we are observing? Now we are observing T3 is a tuple data items coming within a parenthesis. T4 is a tuple data items coming within a parenthesis, but T2 is not a tuple. So here it is a string value. You see, so what is the type of T2? So now I will hit run. So I will get a steer. So it is a string. Whereas type of T3, it is a tuple. Then type of T4, it is a tuple. So from this uh, point that with what, what uh, we are observing, T2, I am trying to represent T2 as a tuple, but T2 is a string. So immediately, so everybody, you mess up. So collection, maybe question may arise, sir, uh, we have a collection, they depend upon us, so how many data items that we may assign. Suppose in my collection, suppose I will keep only one data item, there is no problem. But here, within parenthesis, if I am taking one data item, so that is not considering as tuple that we are observing. So what uh, we will do? So we can make it tuple if we want to make it tuple. So very small additional point that we have to do. So we have to specify a character comma explicitly. So guys, you remember if 
uh, you are going to represent a TOEFL, but your TOEFL is containing one data item. So to make it to represent as a TOEFL, it is mandatory that you have to put a comma, a special character, a special symbol, comma that you have to specify. Now I will hit run. So you see, so output is a TOEFL. Now you see type of T2, it is a TOEFL. So what we are observing? Data item, once it is coming within a parenthesis in output screen. So now it is a TOEFL. So I hope uh, everybody got clarity. So this is the one scenario that we started. So we will go to the next point. So another approach. Another approach here, another approach to represent to represent a TOEFL. Suppose uh, let me topple name is T5 equals to 1, comma here. Parenthesis, I have just suppose I will not give, I will not specify, but currently uh, we know. Uh, we knew so if we have one data item it is mandatory that we have to specify a special symbol that is comma for representing a tuple let t6 equals to 1 comma 2 let t7 equals to 1 comma 2 comma 3 so print t5 then uh, print uh, t6 then print uh, t7 so i am trying to uh, what it represent T5, T6, T7 as a tuple. But here we are not specifying parenthesis. Okay, so we will see. Now I will hit run. So happily I got T5, T6, T7 as tuple. Data items coming within a parenthesis. So here T5, T6, T7 all are tuple. Okay, so it is optional. So when I am going to represent a tuple, so within parenthesis, whatever the data items that we are assigning, so that parenthesis specification that is optional from this uh, scenario that we observed. Okay, so I hope uh, everybody got clarity. So then uh, we will move forward. So we will go to the next point. So that is tuple assignment. That is. TOEFL, that is uh, TOEFL assignment, TOEFL assignment. So, so TOEFL value that uh, we will assign into variable. Suppose, let uh, we have some property, let registration number, name, let branch name, suppose. Uh, let uh, we have a tuple. Suppose uh, let uh, tuple uh, name is student. Okay, so let we have a tuple. So tuple uh, name is student and 101. Let my registration number with that I will consider as 101. So name suppose John and branch name that is suppose CSE. Okay, so what I will do? So I have a tuple. So let the name of the tuple is student, so containing three data items. So that is 101, zone and CSE. So this is 101 is the zeroth index data item, zone is one index data item, then CSE is two index data item. So in which way that I will assign this value to variable, so I can write registration number equals to student of zero zeroth index then name equals to student tuffel name is this of one index then branch name equals to student of two index now i will print i will print student i will print i will print sorry I will print registration number, I will print registration number, I will print name, then I will print branch name. Okay, now I will hit run. You see, so I got 101 John CSE. So this is called as what? Topple assignment. 
so whatever we have the tuple and the tuple containing values so that values that we are assigning into responding variable okay so this is zeroth index data item one index data item two index data item so now right is always assigning into left student 0 so means the value of student 0 101 is assigning into registration number student 1 means the value of student 1 that is john so the value john assigning into name similarly student of 2 so value of student of 2 is cse the value cse is assigning to branch name so this is all about the concept of tuple and, and if i want to see so to get how many built-in functions to get all uh, built-in functions in tuple so same way that uh, which function that we have to call dir function any tuple name that we will specify let here currently my latest tuple name is student now i will hit run you see so all are on used built-in function only two function is used one is count function one is index function okay so how many times data item is what uh, present index function is representing what is the index value of a data item but these two function not performing any operation so for this reason we can say tuple is immutable non-changeable behavior because that for performing any operation that type of used built-in function that is not available in tuple so this is all about tuple